Hello, you guys. Welcome to another Talk About It Thursday. I am your host, Karen Bailey. I pray you guys are having an amazing week. My week seems like it's going by so fast, but it's been super busy. Before you know it, we'll be at another weekend, you guys. Can y'all believe this weather? I swear, it seems like it's summer out here. I cannot believe it's the middle of October. But you know what? God is going to do what God is going to do. You guys, let me know when you're on. And I would love to say hello to you, and then we'll get started for today. Our topic today is, girl, I am so over it. And I dare say all of us have said that at some point in our lives. You know, sometimes you're just over it. You just can't deal with certain things anymore. So that's what we want to talk about today. So let me know when you're on, and we'll get started. We'll give you guys a couple more minutes. And I do apologize because for some reason, the link won't allow me to go right into the event and uh, do the live. So I'm just improvising. Sometimes it'll let me in, and sometimes it won't. So we just roll with it. That's life. Things change, and you have to learn how to adapt and change with it so you don't get frustrated. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started for today in the interest of time so that I can let you get back to your families. Our topic today is, girl, I am so over it. You know, so often we tolerate situations and we tolerate behaviors of people a lot of times just to keep the peace. And when we do that over time, you know, that stuff builds up, especially if it's something frustrating uh, to you and you just keep allowing it to build up and build up. One day you're going to explode. So we got to learn how to just be over stuff and just not tolerate stuff to the point to where it affects our peace. But everybody reaches a breaking point. You know, that's normal. It's normal for you to finally get tired of something that's not benefiting you. And don't be ashamed of that. You know, when you've allowed something for so long and you've given people a chance to do better or you've given a situation time to get better and it's not getting better, be over it. Be over it and say, you know what, I'm so over this right now. I'm going to do something different. Or I'm so over this, you know, I can't deal with you right now. And that is your right to preserve your peace. Sometimes you just have to tell people, I can't do you right now. And I've learned how to do that. I've learned how to avoid certain phone calls, people that drain your spirit, people that are very needy, or people that want to dump all their junk on you. You know, sometimes you got to take a break from that just for your own peace of mind. You have got to preserve yourself and you've got to preserve your mind. Okay, but no one can decide when you've reached that point, when you've reached that limit, but you and you have every right to protect your mental health and to protect your peace. And don't feel guilty about putting your foot down, drawing a line in the sand, if that's what it takes to take care of you. You know, you have to decide when enough is enough. And when you make up your mind enough is enough, do something different. Don't keep allowing the same thing to keep going that's not being productive for you, okay? And then there comes a point in your life, you know, some of us, is when we get in our 40s or 50s, you know, we come to a point in our life where we look back and say, you know what, it's just certain things I'm just not going to deal with anymore. Certain things I'm not going to let steal my joy anymore. Certain things are just not important to me anymore. As you grow and go through your seasons, you will start shifting uh, what's important to you. All of that is going to start shifting. You're going to start preserving yourself. You're going to start realizing a lot of stuff, you know, it's not worth your time. And that's what growing is all about, is deciding what's worth your time and what's not. And being mindful not to waste your time. That's all part of growing up. Okay? And sometimes you just get tired of the nonsense. You know, we all have experienced that where we've tolerated a situation over and over again. And it's just nonsense. It's not producing anything good. It's wasting everybody's time. It's keeping everybody upset. Your opportunity to say, girl, I'm just over it is now. If you're tired of something and tired of dealing with something, just be over it and move on. So let's talk about some things that we all may have in common 
that we just need to get over. You know, nobody has it all together. I say that over and over again. We're all here trying to grow better and be better and live our best lives. And we all have some things that we just need to get over. So we may have these things in common. Number one, pretending that we're okay. When we know we're broke, busted, and disgusted. We got everything going on and we're trying to put up that front like everything's okay. Instead of reaching out and letting somebody know what's going on with you and reaching out to resources that might actually make your life better. Pride will make you do that. Pride will make you pretend that you're better off. You know, jealousy will make you do that. Will make you not want anybody to see, you know, that you're not on your A game all the time. Nobody's on their A game all the time, you guys. Everybody gets tired. Everybody gets frustrated. That's normal. But it's a problem when you're always putting that for the public and you're not being honest with yourself. When, when you're trying to fool everybody and trying to even fool yourself, when you need help, you need help. When you need rest, you need rest. And there are resources out there. There are people that you can talk to and you need to not keep pretending that you're okay when you're not okay. Number two, we got to get over who left us in the past. You know, a lot of us, you know, we went through some things when we were little that affect us even now as adults, but we got to get over that. You know, those things that happened in our childhood, we got to get over that, that family member that left us or that friend that wasn't a real friend or even that love interest, that person that you were in love with that left you, whether he left you for somebody else or left you because, you know, he thought the relationship was over or she thought the relationship was over. You got to get over that. You got to get over that. Hey, Kathy, don't spend the rest of your life thinking back on negative experiences that you've had. You know, those experiences have a purpose in our life. You know, yes, it hurt. Yes, it was painful. Yes, you cried about it. And your feelings are very valid. But there comes a time when you got to leave that stuff in the back. You got to leave it behind you. If you want to live your best life, if you want to live a happy life, you got to get over who left you. Number three, get over who rejected you. You know, some of us have been rejected before, you know, whether it's rejected by family, you know, family didn't want to receive you. You know, I've got you know, family members, simply because of who their mother was or who their father was, they got treated differently. And some family members didn't accept them with loving arms. You know, they didn't make them feel welcome and wanted. You got to get over that and leave that stuff in the past because you know what? You can't undo what was done. I mean, it is what it is, but your future is within your control. You can't have any control over what's already, hey Rashida, what's already happened to you. So we've got to let go of who rejected us, whether it was someone we were in love with, you know, didn't feel the same way about us. It is what it is. People change their mind. People are fickle. You know, sometimes people want you one minute, then they don't want you the next. You got to get over that and stop feeling bad about yourself because a lot of times it has nothing to do with you. People have a right to change their mind. So get over who rejected you. Get over, you know, people feeling sorry for you and stop feeling sorry for yourself. You know, don't let that be your persona where you always, woe is me, this is what happened to me and this happened to me when I was little. Yes, it happened. It's valid. But what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now to make your life better? You're out of that situation now. So let's stop living in the past and let's move on. All that stuff is behind you. So what are you going to do now? That's what we need to focus on. And if you don't like the way your life is right now, make the necessary changes. Don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself. We all have been hurt. We've been rejected. We've been mistreated. All of us have had some level of all of that. But it's up to you to make your life better after it happens. So make the necessary changes so that you can be happy. Number four. We got to get over. We got to put this behind us. Who hurt and betrayed us. 
especially us women, you know, sometimes we get hurt so deep because we love so hard and we don't want to trust anybody else. And then that next man comes along and you got all these walls built up. He hadn't done anything to you. He might look like your ex or say something that your ex said and you're immediately done with him. You know, you don't trust him. You don't like him. You know, I've seen this before. All those things that you say in your head, which is behavior that's going to leave you by yourself. You've got to get over who hurt you and betrayed you in the past. That friend that you trusted, you know, which with, with secrets that you didn't tell anybody else. Maybe when they broke off y'all's friendship, they started telling all your business. You know what? It is what, what it is. You told them that. Of course, you expected them to keep it to themselves. But if they don't, you can't sit around and worry about that all the time. Just learn who to trust in the future. But there's nothing you can do about that, okay? And then actions of people we can't control. Actions prove who someone is. Watch what they do, not what they say. Words is who they want to be. But actions will show you exactly what a person is. And all you got to do is step back and just pay attention. Keep your eyes on people. Learn how to be a people watcher. I'm learning to be a people watcher as I get older. I, when I'm with a group of people, I don't say a whole lot, especially if I don't know everybody. I'm feeling everybody out. I'm trying to see who is who in the whole scenario. And sometimes you need to know what kind of people you're dealing with so that you'll know how to deal with them. So actions say who a person really is. Their words say who they want to be. So remember that. And then also... As far as people hurting and betraying you, learn how to miss people without wanting to be with them. You know, and I know how you can get so close to somebody and they just hurt you so bad. Stop wanting to be with them. It's okay to miss them. Stop wanting to be with them. Make up your mind, okay, that person was not for me. That's why the thing happened the way that it did. It's all right to miss them. But don't make the mistake of wanting to be with them because you know what? You put your life on hold wanting something that's not good for you. You have to learn how to love people from a distance. And definitely don't fall for the same trap twice. You know, when, when you really love somebody and even though they've hurt you deeply, they've showed you who they are unapologetically most of the time. And then because of how we feel, and because of our emotions being all wrapped up in it, we keep falling for the same stuff and then wondering why they keep hurting you again. They haven't changed. They showed you who they were. You keep giving them chance after chance after chance. You've got to start putting yourself first. No matter how bad it hurts, no matter how much you love that person, learn how to miss people without having to be with people. That's, that's a process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, but put yourself first. Tell yourself you deserve better because you do. Anybody that's hurting you and, and constantly uh, mistreating you, they're not for you. A lot of times those soul ties, you guys, we get all entangled with people. We got to stop doing that because you get attached to things. And those things can bring you down and keep you in bondage for years after years after years. So learn how to miss somebody without wanting to be with them. It's okay. And it's okay to love somebody without wanting to be with them because sometimes they're just not for you. Okay? And then C, don't allow yourself to be used. Ladies, don't allow yourself to be used just because you're lonely. And I'm not putting anybody on blast because I've been there. I've been there, been vulnerable for somebody that I know was no good for me, that it hurt me in my past. So I know about this one, ladies, but we got to learn how to be strong. We got to learn how to put ourselves first and say, you know what? I deserve better than that. I'll just have to find something to do. I'll call one of my girlfriends, see if they want to hang out and watch a movie. But I'm not calling that person because all they're going to do is use me and keep hurting me. And you've got to make that decision to draw that line in the sand. you got to say to yourself, I'm over it. I'm over it. I don't want to keep dealing with this. But that's a decision that only you can make. Okay? Another thing that we've got to be over and get over it is the opinions of other people. You know, when I was younger, people's opinions were everything. Everything. You know, they could 
make me feel good one day and have me crying the next. I cried so much in my youth and my teenage years and my early 20s and 30s. I was always crying about something. And it was because of what people would say to me or, or people not approving of this or that or people leaving me out of this and that. And then it seemed like when I hit my 40. My 40th birthday, something just snapped. I said, you know what? Why? Why do you allow people to take you on an emotional roller coaster? Why? And I couldn't come up with a good enough answer. And then I decided at that point, I was going to start living for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live and do my best to be happy. While people are always going to have their opinion, that doesn't make it true. That doesn't make it true. What God and what I say make it true. And I learned to live my life by that. You know, if God is pleased with me and I'm pleased with myself and, and I'm doing things the best way that I can, I don't need the opinions of other people. Not family. I don't take their opinions. You know, I, they used to be the worst. You know, they, they could find your flaws and remind you all the time of where where you fell off or where you didn't make the mark or, you know, a mistake that you made. Family is good at that, at digging at you and throwing them little shady remarks and stuff at you. But you've got to get some thick skin and hold your shoulders back and say, you know what, whatever I did, I know better. And that's in the past. And God has forgiven me for it. And I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm done with that. And you have to draw a line in the sand and stop people from bringing up stuff from your past. Okay? Number six, stop dwelling on what didn't work before. You know, I've been divorced and you know what? I don't dwell on that. You know, if it didn't work, it just didn't work. You know, and people sometimes, just, they just live their whole life trying to figure out why something didn't work. Sometimes it's just not meant to be. And you have to understand that you have to cherish the time that you had. And then sometimes things just don't last. And that's okay. You know, sometimes that person's better off without you and you're better off without them. And together you guys are toxic. And you got to recognize when you're in a toxic relationship. I didn't recognize it at first. It took me years to recognize that I was in a toxic relationship that was about to cause me irreparable damage. And something had to be done. So don't dwell on what didn't work before. You know, don't don't spend your whole life trying to figure out why something didn't work. Just move on with your life and try your best to be happy. Number seven, be over the decisions that you made when you were young. You know, some people, you know, they're still talking about stuff that they did when they was young. Oh, I wish I if I knew then what I knew now. I hate that I did this when I was young, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, we were all young and ignorant, ignorant at some point. You know, it's just a lot of stuff we didn't know. People couldn't tell us nothing. We were going to do what we wanted to do. We were going to have it our way. And that's ignorant behavior right there. You know, to where you think at 16, 17 that you know more than your parents. You know more than adults that are trying to guide you in the right way. But we all went through that rebellious stage. Some of us in our 20s and 30s. You know, people try to come and try to help us and guide us in the right direction. Oh, we grown now. You can't tell me nothing. I'm over 21. I'm paying all my bills. You know, we took that attitude with people. And now we wish that we would have listened, you know, to, to people that were trying to help us to do better and live better. But you know what? You can't dwell on that. The past is the past. What you didn't do, hey, you can't worry about it. But what are you doing now? Everything is about what are you doing now with your life? You know, don't worry about those ignorant decisions that you made. You know, I think back about some of the young ladies I've talked to, you know, they've had abortions. They've, they've done some things, you know, in their past. And I said, baby, I said, what's done is done. I said, you can't undo that if you wanted to. Just ask God to forgive you and move on with your life. You know, you have to remind people you are not your mistake. You are not the mistake that you made. I made a bunch of mistakes, and those mistakes were over my head for years, probably 20, 30 years. I wore those like a hat. And then one day, God says, why are you carrying what you were supposed to give to me? And I, once I gave it to him, I didn't have to wear that hat anymore. I didn't have to walk around with my head down anymore. But you've got to decide to give those things over to God, those mistakes that you made in your past, Give them over to God so you don't have to wear that heavy hat. That is a heavy hat dwelling 
in your life, everything reminding you of what you did wrong. Give that stuff over to Jesus and let him deal with it and move on with your life. Number eight, talking just to be talking. Now, we got to get over just speaking just to be speaking. You know, sometimes we say the silliest things, you guys. People ask how you doing. Oh, girl, I'm just making it. Really? Is that how you want to live your life? And then you wonder why you're struggling because you're always telling folks you're just barely making it. You're just making it. You know, stop speaking stuff that you don't want to see walk out in your life because your words have power. You need to start speaking. I'm not saying faking and shaking and saying, oh, I'm highly blessed and favored in the Lord. You know, you ain't got to do all of that. But stop just saying you're mediocre all the time. You know, somebody asks you how you doing. Girl, I'm good. How you doing? It's just that simple because you believe you're good and you know the cause of the God that you serve, you're going to be good. So you got to speak what you want to see and stop just saying things, you know, just to be saying it. You know, sometimes we curse ourselves with the things that we allow to come out of our mouths. So we got to be careful about speaking negativity over ourselves and over our lives. And then get over always thinking about the worst case scenario on everything. You know, some people are, they call them Debbie Downers. You know, you go to tell them an idea and they want to tell you everything that could possibly go wrong. Get over that worst case scenario and telling people how things can go wrong even before they start. You don't know what's going to happen. So why don't you take a chance and try it? If it don't work, so be it. At least you try it. So stop, stop with that negative thinking and just speaking negativity over everything. You've got to start expecting to win. And you got to speak it even when you're scared. And because you got to remember, you know, God says we're winners. He says that, you know, we're more than conquerors. So even when you don't feel it, you need to speak it and just remind God of his word. Lord, you said I'm more than a conqueror. So even though I'm scared to do this, I know that you're going to make, make a way for me out of no way. But you've got to start speaking that and believing that. And it's amazing. The doors that God will open for you if you're walking in faith. You got to walk it even when you're scared. And you just got to repeat God's word and give it back to him and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I don't know what I'm doing, but Lord, I'm trusting you. That's how I started with Sister I Got You. I said, Lord, you keep bringing this before me to do this, this women's group. Then he came to me with this podcast. I said, okay, you want me to do all this talking to these people? You know, I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm going to say. But every week he gives me what I need to say. I don't have to worry about it. He gives me my topics and he gives me what to say. You know, because I walk it out in faith and say, Lord, you know what? You told me to start this and I'm going to keep going until you tell me something different. So I'm going to trust you to give me what I need. And he has not failed me yet. Number nine, we got to be over worrying about everybody else's business while our house is falling apart. You know, sometimes people can tell you everybody's business and their house is just raggedy and falling apart. We got to keep our eyes on our own paper, you guys. We got to keep, keep uh, tend to our own sheet. You know, stuff can go on in your house simply because you're too busy being in everybody else's business. So it's time out for that. We need to focus on our own house, whether that's just you by yourself. That means you need to focus on making your life better, work on your health, work on um, doing new things, trying new things, trying to find ways to, to make yourself more, um, not the word worldly, um, trying to say open-minded you know, well-rounded. That's the word I'm looking for. You know, you got something to do just because you don't have a bunch of people in your house. You still got things you need to take care of your own. You don't really have time to be messing in anybody else's situation. So let's stop worrying about everybody else's business. Learn how to pray for people and focus on our own issues because we all have them. And if we can focus on our own issues, we can be better and be a better example for somebody else. You might help them out of their issue just by you getting better better yourself. They looking at you and see how you walking. You know, you don't know how that's going to bless somebody. Number 10, we need to be over always having to be right all the time. Are you one of those people that always have to have the last word? You got to be right all the time. It's your way or the highway. We got to be over that. 
because nobody's right all the time. You know, you need to learn how to humble yourself and learn how to apologize. You know, people that tend to think they're right all the time, they have a hard time with apologizing. You know, you need to learn to apologize simply because you're not always right. You know, you may have one thing in your mind, but if you'll be quiet and listen to somebody else, you might hear that maybe you don't have the correct answer. Or maybe there was more than one way of doing what you were trying to do or more than one perspective. Learn how to apologize, you guys, and learn how to not always have to be right. Number 11, we need to get over self-sabotaging behavior. You know, some of us are so scared to step out and do something that when the opportunity comes, we sabotage it before we can even get started good. You know, we'll find a way to, to make it fail early because we don't want to waste no time. You know, I'm glad it ended like it did. You know, at least at least I was only in it for a week. You know, this, that, and the other. And ladies with relationships, sometimes we'll sabotage those because we start getting scared. You know, we start having feelings. We're not sure that other person has the same feeling. So you find a way to mess up the whole relationship. You can solve that by talking, communication. Find out where that person is at. You don't have to sabotage the relationship because you're scared of being hurt. Sit down and communicate with that person, okay? And then number 12, we need to be over having anxiety over what you can't control. There are some things in life we just cannot control. If you can't control it, give it to God and say, you know what, Lord, I'm in this situation. I need your help, but I'm not going to stay up all night walking the floor. I'm not going to stay up, you know, and, and miss my sleep and end up sick, you know, and my immune system down, my blood pressure up, you know, headaches, this, that, and the other, you know, stop having anxiety over stuff that you just simply have no control over. You have to learn to speak peace to that situation. And you have to ask God, you know, God, bring me peace in this situation. I don't know why I'm having to go through this, Lord, but I'm putting it in your hands. Give me peace while I'm going through. Number 13, we've got to get over letting generational curses rule your life. You know, when you know some horrible stuff runs in your family, you don't just keep that going. You know, if you know people argue all the time, they're in the yard fighting and carrying on, don't add to that. You be the change. You be you be the curse breaker in your family. If, if women don't get along in your family, you make sure you're getting along with everybody. You make sure you're the communicator. Show them a better way. Show them a better way. Okay, so don't just allow generational curses just to run through your family. If there is a way for you to break that curse, pray over those things when you see it. You know, God, God will work those things out, but you need to pray over those things and pray what you want to see happening in your family, happening in your relationships. Number 14, we got to get over waiting for people to support you and believe in you. You know, when God gives you something, a lot of times other people can't see it, but that's okay. They're not supposed to. You know, sometimes God, you know, people that have a gift, you know, everybody's not anointed to sing. Some people just have a gift and have a beautiful voice. It's a difference between a beautiful voice and having anointing from the Lord. But, but a lot of times people will recognize things like that. You know, oh, she can sing this, that, and the other. But God may give you a gift of compassion and nobody can really uh, see that. That's not something that's just put out in the forefront. That's things that you do in private, behind closed doors. You're helping people that nobody knows about, things of that nature. Don't worry about if people support you or believe in you. If you know that you know that you know that that's what you're supposed to be doing, go it alone. There's nothing wrong with it. God is going to send the people in your life that are going to see you for who you are. They're going to support you and they're going to be there for you. It may not be the people that you think are supposed to support you. You got to get over that. And you got to get over feeling sorry for yourself because they can't see you, because your family don't see you as such and such, because your friends don't see you as such and such. If it is who you are, don't worry about it. God will send the necessary people in your life. So you got to get over sitting up sulking and being mad at people because they don't support you. That may not be their job. God may not have them around you for whatever you're trying to do. You may be entering a whole new arena with a whole different people. And that's okay. 
That's okay. Quit trying to bring people along with you that's not supposed to go. And number 15, we got to get over trying to impress people. You know, a lot of times we try, we, we break in the bank, trying to look a certain way, trying to look like we've got this, that, and the other, trying to drive the nicest car. It's fine if you can afford to do that, but do it for you. Don't do it to impress people. Don't do it so people can say, oh, look at so-and-so. She got this, 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 and this. Don't do stuff to impress people because you know what? They'll talk about you today and tomorrow they'll forget all about you. So so if you're going to do something, do it for you. Do it because that's what you wanted to do. Okay? And don't try to make somebody want you that doesn't want you. Ladies, one thing I've learned, when a man is not interested, he's really not interested. And it doesn't matter what you do. He'll allow you to do what you do, but that won't make him want you if that's not his true desire. If he's really not into you, there's nothing really that you're going to be able to do to change that. And you can't make someone love you, and you can't make somebody respect you. Those are qualities they've got to see in you for themselves. You can't force that on anybody, okay? And then when some people uh, make up their minds about you, there's nothing you can do to change it. You know, especially if you realize that you haven't done anything wrong. You know, sometimes you're just not their cup of tea. You know, um, I don't make friends very easily, and I'm, I'm, I, that used to bother me. But now I kind of like that because I give people room to show me who they are now. So I'm not really disappointed if I don't click with this person or that person because I'm I'm watching, just kind of see who you really are, listening to your conversation, you know, and just trying to see if you really are friend material. Everybody's not friend material. Some people are meant to be acquaintances, people that you hang out with, you go out with, and hey, how you doing? But everybody can't be your friend, and that's okay. Some people are just meant to be your acquaintance, and you got to be okay with that, okay? And uh, number 16, we've got to be over viewing failure as defeat. You know, everybody fails at something at some point in their life. And you're going to have multiple failures if you keep living. So failure is, is meant to teach you how to be better. That's the job of failure. Teach you how to do better and be better. And show you that there are better ways of doing something. It builds your character. So just because you fail at something, that doesn't mean you're a failure. That means that you need to find a better way. If you're going to try to pursue that again, find a better way. Get you some help. Get some assistance so somebody can show you a better way to do that thing. But, but don't be down on yourself just because you fail at something. We all fail. And sometimes it's just not for you. And that's okay because at least you tried. And you found out that it's not for you. So you can check that off the list and move on to something else. Number 17, we got to get over making excuses, you guys. Not taking ownership for our life. You know, we made all those decisions, all those mistakes. But we have to own that. You know, when you're an adult and you're making decisions, you can't really blame that on anybody else. You got to take ownership for why you did what you did. And don't keep making excuses. Because when you take accountability for yourself, you're less likely to go back and repeat those same behaviors because you understand the common denominator was you. I was the one that was in the midst of all of this. What do I need to do different? How do I need to think differently so I don't end up in this situation again? Take accountability and quit blaming everybody else for what you did or how things turned out. Look at yourself and where you went wrong and, and the decisions that you made. And then make better decisions based off of that. Number 18, we got to get over letting our present circumstance decide who we are. You may be going through a rough patch right now, but don't get discouraged and think that this is the way your life is always going to be. You just got to have some time. Everybody goes in the valley, but you don't stay there. You have to make a choice that, okay, I'm here right now, but I'm actively working on a way to get out of here. That gives you time to think and try to figure out what can I do better so that I don't have to stay in this situation. You have to decide that whatever you're going through right now, it is not going to be like this for the rest of your life. God has the final say, and it's not over until he says it's over. So don't let your current circumstance make you think that this is going to be your life forever. 
You just have to do the work and make some better decisions to get yourself out of that situation. Number 19, when things go wrong, don't go with them. Just because something goes wrong, don't let it shake you to your core. You know, you've got to have a level of understanding that life is just like that. Some things are going to go, go good and some things are not. You cannot let the things that go wrong shake you to your core and throw you off your game. You know, we all are running a race. Don't let something that went wrong put you on the sidelines because guess what? Life is going to go on with or without you. All you're doing is losing time. You're losing you're losing leverage, you know, by sitting on the sidelines, feeling sorry for yourself. Yes, it happens. Yes, it didn't work. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it threw you off for a minute. But shake yourself off and get back up because you got a life to live. You know, life doesn't stop because you have a disappointment. Life doesn't stop because you hurt. You know, you've got to decide that you don't have time for depression. You know, depression likes to seep in when you decide to go. When something fails, you fall with it. That's when that depression comes in. When you decide that your life is over because something didn't go right. But you've got to learn how to turn those letters around. Because you know what? Just how you got in it, there's always a way to get out of it. God says he makes a way of escape. So just how you got in that situation, guess what? There's a way that you get out of it. And the way you get out of it is by changing those words and those letters in that uh, word depression to I pressed on. Press on. You know, if there was a way to get in it, there's definitely a way to get out of it. But you can't get out of it feeling sorry for yourself. And that's something we got to get over and understand that life is going to take us on hills and valleys. And we're going to be good sometimes and then we're going to have some low spots. But you can't lay down in the low spots. You're going to have to get up and you're going to have to press on because people are depending on you. Life is not going to stop because you decide to lay down. So you might as well dust yourself off, get up, and try something different and try to get yourself to a better position. And the last one, number 20, get over tradition and get over things staying the same. Because as we can see, especially uh, since 2020 when COVID hit, life is not the same. And you got to get over sitting back thinking about, oh, I remember when we used to do it this way, that way, blah, 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 blah. You can't get stuck in tradition because things are constantly changing. So you got to make up your mind that, okay, it was like that in the past, but it's different now. So you've got to understand, you got to broaden your mind and be open to new things because life is changing. Nothing stays the same. And as long as you have a mindset to where you're trying to stay stuck in the past, you're never going to be able to move forward. You're never going to be happy. And that's our goal. You know, God came and Jesus came so that we can have life and life more abundantly. But if you're stuck in the past or stuck in wanting things to be the way they used to be, you're going to get left behind because everything is moving with or without you. So my final thought is, no one is immune to trouble, heartache, or pain, but it's up to you how long it lasts. Make a decision, a conscious decision, to let go and just simply get over some of the stuff that's been holding you back. Jesus came, like I just said a minute ago, so that we could have life and have life more abundantly. You're stronger than you think, and if you keep a positive mindset, you will be able to step over the stuff that used to trip that used to trip you up in the past. So you'll be able to step over the stuff that you used to trip over. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Love you guys and thank you for watching. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.